Of all the counties of Britain, perhaps the most celebrated for its wildlife is Norfolk. From the Wash in the northwest to the Broads, from the North Norfolk coast to the Brex, everywhere there is rare and special wildlife. And protecting it since 1926 is Norfolk Wildlife Trust, which today is engaged in a national programme called Living Landscapes. Living Landscapes are about restoring habitat where it exists, recreating habitat where it has been lost, and reconnecting areas of isolated habitat. Crucially, it's also about reconnecting people with the landscapes they inhabit. Across this series, we'll be exploring the living landscapes of our county, meeting the people who are helping to restore them, and learning about the rare wildlife which inhabits them. This is Wild Norfolk. When you think about Norfolk's wildlife, inevitably you think about the Norfolk Broads. The Broads are a fabulous mix of open water, of reed bed, of fen, of wet woodland, forming together the largest and most important lowland wetland in the UK. I've come today to Hickling Broad, the largest of all the Norfolk Broads in the Upper Thurn living landscape, to find out what special wildlife lives here, how habitat is being managed for it, and how local people can be involved in their community living landscape. Well, Norfolk Wildlife Trust have had a, a holding at Hickling Broad since the mid-1940s when the, what was the Whitesley estate, which had been run as a shooting estate, was acquired by Christopher Campbell and handed over to the Trust. We've added bits subsequently, so now we have a land holding of nearly 600 hectares, which is a big-sized reserve for the UK. The best-known habitat of the Norfolk Broads, of course, are the Broads themselves. Medieval peat diggings which are flooded due to the low-lying nature of the landscape. Around the edges of the Broads are a complex of habitats, including reed beds home to rare bitterns and marsh harriers, grazing marshes which in winter are full of wetland birds like widgeon from the Arctic tundras and pink-footed geese which come to us from Iceland. Also here there are fens, rare grassland habitats flooded by alkaline waters with a host of rare plants and invertebrates inhabiting them. And where these habitats are left unmanaged, gradually they're colonised by woods, wet woods which are known as carp. Fens are famous for their flora, specialised plants which can only live in these wet alkaline habitats. One of the really special plants is the marsh fern. Here it's abundant, but elsewhere in the country it is an extremely rare plant. Under the water, invisible to us, there are rare water plants, rare pondweeds, rare stoneworts and living in the water, rare species of fish, feeding on them. Otters, which are returning to the county in numbers, great crested grebes nesting around the edges of the broads, common terns migrating here from Africa. But this beautiful place isn't just for wildlife. For centuries, it's been at the heart of local communities through the extraction of natural resources and increasingly in modern times through tourism. Hickling Broad is famous for its pike fishery, for windsurfing, for sailing. Hundreds of people come here to enjoy the beauty of this place each year. And on a day like this, it's easy to see why. Here in the Bure Valley living landscape, Norfolk Wildlife Trust is engaged in a daring habitat restoration project. For the past 25 years, they have been buying land at Upton Marshes and surrounding areas and bringing water back onto the land, making it once again healthy habitat for nesting waders, for wintering waterfowl and for the rare plants which inhabit the ditches and dikes of the grazing marsh. Of course, a living landscape is nothing without the people who live in it, the communities whose lives are shaped by the landscape. So I've come now to the Bure Valley Living Landscape to meet the Bure Valley Conservation Group, which has been set up in conjunction with Norfolk Wildlife Trust, working to restore a grass habitat here at Roman Wood. Mm -hmm. 
well, we're raking the meadow. We've just done a cut. Uh, I might say, to start with, that this meadow has not been cut for about 15 years. So it was so, long and messy. Absolutely. And so this is an initial cut now. We're then going to hammer it over the next few months with the idea that wildflowers will regenerate over the next two or three years. We've had uh, a close liaison with the Wildlife Trust. They've given us advice. We've been forming this group, the Bureau of Valley Conservation Group, through the Living Landscape Project. And uh, so we work together. And all our volunteers, as such, come from the Bureau of Valley uh, Conservation Group. Living landscapes are as much about people as they are about wildlife. To get involved in your own living landscape wherever you are in Norfolk, find out more by visiting the Norfolk Wildlife Trust website. <laughs>